Nice reward. Blessing Jesus.
Bless Him, Jesus. Amen. All right. I guess I'll keep this in my hand. Bless him, God. Bless him, Jesus. Now, as uh, right now, I'm about as confused as the term I have to go with. Yes, sir. It's not a good feeling. Bless you, Bless you. Turn with me to look down tonight. Thank God that no matter what we face, what we go through in our lives, He's always there. That's right. Amen. There's nothing we could ever go through that he is not aware of. That's right. I was thinking today, can't remember where it's at, but David was talking. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And that's that's a, right. very, uh, yeah. a very popular verse. People know that verse. But I thank God that when our heart is overwhelmed, when our, when our mind and our thoughts are so consumed and our heart is broken and it seems that our life is turned upside down and oh, we don't know which way to go. We can always turn to the one who's higher than you. We can always turn to the one who, who knows what our next step needs to be. Amen. We can turn to the one who knows what our tomorrow holds. We can turn to the one who has the strength and has the grace to carry us on through. That's right. Thank God for that. Amen. You know, we face a lot of things in our life. It, it seems, you know, we go through prayer requests time and and we hear all the struggles that people are going through and the broken hearts and the, 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 the circumstances in life. And, and sometimes you just get to the point you don't know what to do. That's right. You, you know God is in control. You know He's going to be there. And the, because the Bible says that we've seen Him in the past, but sometimes you just feel like He's gone for God. That's right. That's what it feels like. And that's what it looks like. But I thank God there is one that we can turn to. There is one yeah. that has what we need. And that's Amen. Right. Book of Daniel here, and I believe I believe it might it might work here. We'll just follow God the best we can, okay? Daniel chapter number one, some very familiar story. I'm not used to holding a microphone. That is weird, isn't it? You guys come up and say, I, I don't know about that. I'm like, I'm such a big deal. It is. If you don't have ice cream on it, I usually don't hold it like this. <laughs> Daniel chapter number 1, verse number 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, king Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, which part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried in the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Verse number 3 is where we want to pick up here. Um, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no witness, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, uh, Mishael, and Azariah, unto them whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the princes of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. You may be seated today. A lot of times we'll approach this verse here when uh, the Babylonian captivity here, Daniel and hit these three guys were one of one amongst one of the first groups that was brought in, if not maybe the first one, I, I'm not sure. But that they're brought in. And we, we get to that, we, we read the story where, where they want to be brought before the king, be able to stand in the king's palace. You know, they were well learned, well favored. Yeah. They, they, they were just men that you would look at and admire. They were men capable of many things. And, uh, and who could be appointed a, a position of power, yeah. a position of great responsibility that many people would look up to. And I believe that had to do, a lot to do with their reasoning for this. And, and what, we see a few things, but a lot of times we'll skip back down to verse number 8 where Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Now that, that's awesome. We need to do that. Yeah. And we ought to have a purpose and a determination in our heart we're not going to defile ourselves with the world. Right. But I see five different steps here, five different things 
that they wanted to change in Daniel's life. There are five things they wanted to change in Daniel's life. As I read this, I, I, I see five things the devil wants to change in my life. And we're going to get right right down to the point. I know everybody's tired and uh, a lot of us you know, don't feel good, so we'll get right with it. Come on, the first us. thing I believe we Bless see you, here, he says, bring them. Yeah. Bring them to me. Bring them here. He says here, bring them. Bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed and of the prince. He said, bring them. Number one, he wants to change the location. Come on, that's right. That's right. If there's anything the devil wants to do in our life, is change my location. Come on. Yeah. <laughs>
king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was very capable of doing this already. They was able to, they were very capable of standing in a position of a teacher's position and teaching what the king desired them to teach. They already knew a lot of it. Yeah. But the king said, I know they know a lot of things. They understand enough to be able to teach my people. But there's some things I really want to teach them before I put them in that position. Oh, man. Yep. He wanted to change their literature. Yep. Come on, preacher. Change their location. Yeah, yeah. come on, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, we've got to change what they've been reading a little bit. Uh -huh. we got to get all that up. Now, now, they know they have some of my books, but they have some other ones, too. we got to get rid of all that. So that's why we got to get them out of there and bring them here, because they ain't around all that stuff anymore. Yeah. And I'm going to put my books in front of them, and yeah. I'm going to put my teachers in front of them, and I'm going to teach them what I want them to know. I'm going to teach them what I want them to say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, sir. But the devil can get our, our location changed. Come on. He's going to start working on our literature. Yeah. And it does matter what we read. Amen. Amen. It does yeah. what we look at Amen. And it does matter right. what we listen to on the radio. Amen. Amen. All of these things matter. And the devil knows it. That's why he's got them out there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If the devil can get us out of this book right here. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's right. Yeah. That's not bad. I heard that on. I don't think it is, but that's what he's saying. It's going to be easy. If I get out of this book right here, if I get him out of this book right here, his kids will have to read it. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Amen, Amen preacher. Yep. Yeah. Come on. He knows what the book says because he's been reading it. Yeah. Thy word of my head and my heart that I might not sin against God. So we got to get that mess out there and start filling that heart up so it melts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because right Come so on. we got to get them out of there and bring them here, and then we got to start teaching them something. Oh, that looks me. Oh, yeah. That happens to a lot of places around the world. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's free. amazing how that's applied into a lot of different things. But the devil, if he, if he can change your location, he's going to come after your literature. Amen. We better be yep. real careful that we don't allow Satan to do that. He, that he wants to change it. Yes, he does. That's yep. why we have so many reprobates and... And people running around everywhere. That's why we have the mess we have. That's uh, it. Amen. You've never seen such a mess. No. I, I can't remember. I think it was Brother Johnny was talking about this morning in Sunday school. I believe it was him, Senator. I heard it on the radio. It's a sad day when you come down to elect to the President of the United States. And it's based upon whether they're pro, for abortion or not for abortion. Oh, yeah. you know? Or for these major things. Everybody that has a God given brain knows it's right and wrong. Right. It's Amen. Coming down Literature. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's changed the literature in her pulpits. Come on. Yeah. To something that ain't the word of God. Amen. He's changed Amen. the literature in our homes to something that's totally against the word of God. Yeah. He's changed the literature in our schools and now that's we got good, a bunch preacher. of people out here Come on. running around burning down buildings and, and doing this and doing that and think it's right. They really do believe they're right. The devil hasn't convinced he's deceived and blinded the eyes of them. Yeah. Because about 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, he started sneaking stuff in. And even before that, yeah. what was sin back then? They didn't sin no more. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. That's, what I, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I heard it ain't sin back then. I heard it ain't bad no more to, oh. to see stuff on the TV you shouldn't see. Come on, yeah. yeah, come on, preacher. I, I didn't know that back then. My mom and dad always told me it was bad. Yeah. yeah. He must have been wrong back then. So I don't know. Uh, no, no changed, sir. Huh? That's the way it is. That's right. Satan says, if I can get it in now, just a little bit. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, pat them on the back for what they do, no, but we got to add a few things in there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's be careful. Because Brother Robert, Satan wants to change my literature. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I can't pull up my Bible right now on the road, but boy, that radio sure is handy. That's right. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ain't it handy to get you on that radio button? Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden you're flipping through there the devil. The, the very song that you used to like years ago all of a sudden pops up on the radio. Oh, yeah. Yourself. The winter's down and the cool air is going. Yeah, come on, preacher. And the sun's come on. And you're saying, oh, what a perfect time to listen to this song. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hard day working. I've been out ready to go home, give me some dinner. I think I'll just finish this song and I'll just switch it over later. Just a little bit. Yeah. Uh huh. There you go. That's it, preacher. Be careful. That's it. Come on. When we first got 
numbers, but where is he you planted? Right. I've heard yeah. that message a lot, but I can't remember any of it. That one that he preached. But where he planted? God planted you here, then grow and bloom and produce fruit for the glory of God and for his purpose. And stay in the book. That's yeah. right. Amen. Don't let your friends, don't let the world, don't let nobody else get you out of this book. Amen. This book right here is what's going to keep us going, Brother Robert. That's right. This book right here is what's going to help lead you back to that rock in the night. This book right here is what's going to give him a strength. Yeah. If he can get me out of the book, you know, some weak. Yeah. If he can get me out of the book, he knows I'm going to get discouraged. Yeah. If he can get me out of this book, he knows he's going to defeat me. Not too long. That's right. Yeah. That That's it. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. A lot. Amen. <laughs> yeah, have you ever done it? Sure. Yeah. Change your literature. Yep. Thirdly, we see Satan wanted to change his language. He said, I want to teach, might, that we might teach them the learning and the tongue. Shall be. Yep. It's in a foreign place. They didn't talk like it, did they? Yep. It's not wrong with learning another language. But how else? What a better way to get these guys more capable of teaching the people than to be able to speak that language. Come oh. on. Yeah. You ever heard that? I don't have this written down. You ever heard a guy say, I, asked, I know somebody did. He was a pastor and started growing his hair out. Somebody asked him, he said, well, Why are you growing your hair out? He said, Well, I figure if I grow my hair out, I can reach some of them, some of them hippies, some of them guys with long hair, that they might feel a little bit better about coming to church. Come on, preacher. Uh huh. He'll get you to compromise just a little bit. There you go. Yep. He'll get you to want to speak the language of the world in order to attract yeah. the world. Amen. He'll get you to want to look like the world yeah. in order to attract the world. We've got to be real careful yeah. that we don't let Satan change our language. Amen. That's right. got to be real careful. It does matter what we say. Yes, it does. It does Amen. matter what we talk like. Amen. Amen. It does matter who we talk to. That's yeah. right. It matters what we talk about Amen. at all times. Amen. Boy, I'm convicted now. Are you? That gets me right here. Good yeah. job. Sometimes you get, you get you get a little low in the spirit, high in the flesh. Next thing you know, some things come out your mouth. Should not Amen. Yeah. Thank God He has mercy and grace. Amen. Amen. Thank He's you. Faith, how that go? If we're faithful and confess our sins, or if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just forgive us our sins. That's right. Yeah. I thank God for that. Sometimes Amen. we mess up. Yeah. Sometimes we just want to drop the ball. We got to be very careful that when we do, we take that sucker back up. <laughs> you don't want to stay there. <laughs> the devil wants to change your language. Yes, sir. Isn't it amazing? You can tell a man. You tell what a man is. Who he is by the way he talks. That's right. Yeah. You can. Even in the Bible, Peter did it. Yeah. Peter denied Christ three times. He said, "We don't believe it because your speech bereaves you." Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. The certain tongue that he had was. Amen. That's right. You gotta be careful. Yes, sir. You gotta be careful what we talk about. Amen. Amen. Satan brought us out of a life of sin. Yeah. And if he can get us to go back, have you ever had this thought? When, when you run one of your buddies, maybe not even one of your old buddies, just somebody new, and they kind of have a loose tongue. <laughs> Has the devil ever put the thought in your mind? Well, if I if I uh, lower my standards just a little bit, they may accept me. Uh-huh. You ever had my once had that? I'm not asking yeah. if I know I'm not. I mean, really? No. Because they have to meet that. Believe it or not. Yeah. I don't know if we did that. But, but I was talking to him and, and I thought we might connect a little better if I kind of spoke his language. Uh-huh. Come on. Yeah, come on, preacher. Free word. Yeah. That's right. Ain't that man? Amen. We gotta watch it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because what we think we're doing is not what we're doing. Oh, change the literature. Yep. Change the language. Amen. The Bible says that we ought not let Ephesians or Psalms 19:14. We should we let the words of our mouth be acceptable. Yes. And I say, let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. Amen. Oh, as children of God. It goes on and on. I'm not going to spend more time here. I feel like I'm supposed to. But he's going to change our location. God set our feet upon the rock and Satan wants to do nothing but yank us off of it. Amen. Right. Yeah. He gave us a new family. He wants to do nothing to separate us from our new family. That's right. And he wants to get us out of the book and get us into something else that's going to lead us down the wrong path. That's right. He wants to change our language. 
And he also wants to change our looks. Yeah. I'm not trying to think about it. <laughs> he wants to change our looks. He said, bring them to me. He said, we're going to teach them the learning of the tongue of the child ends. And the king appointed them a day of provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them through years. Wanted to change their appearance. There you go. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. Whether it be for the good or for the bad, he needed to change it. Yeah. He needed to change everything on the inside of them and wanted to change everything on the outside of them. That's so right. when everybody looked, they saw they were different, they were still in good shape, and everybody else was going to follow. There you go. That's what it's about. Yeah. And if the devil wants to do anything in this world, he'll change our location, yeah. he'll change our literature, and he's going to want to change our language, get us talking like the world again, he's going to want to get us looking like the world. There you yeah. go. Yeah. We yeah. see it churches all over the place looking like the world. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You come to Man. church, and, and however you want to come to church, and, and you worship and dance and praise and all this, this, this ungodliness that they do, that, that's nothing but of the devil. Right. It's Amen. Not praise. Yeah. Right. It's fleshly. It's carnal. It's wicked. Right. Amen. But the devil wants to get us Christians looking like the world. That's right. Yeah. That's what he wants. Yeah, yes, sir. Sure you can tell a lot about a man by the way he dresses. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. You can Amen. tell a painter. I can walk into Lowe's and I can see the painter. Sure. I can yeah. walk into Lowe's and see a carpenter. Yeah. yeah. I can see a roofer. I can see a plumber. I know what they are by the way they're dressed. Yeah. I know what they are by the what they ride around in. Right. But yeah. well, most of the time, you know. Amen. Yeah. And the devil wants to do nothing but to change our looks. Amen. If he can get us to look a little bit more like the world, he succeeds each and every day. Yeah. And we ought to watch out for that. Amen. Right? We ought to watch out and make sure that we represent Christ in such a way that when people look at us, yeah. Yeah. they know there's something different. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Does our family see us conforming to the Chaldean way of living? Oh, uh, come on now. Old Daddy said, hold on now. <laughs> he said, when you started off, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> He's like, but you're getting every aspect of my life now. Right. And I'm fixing yeah. to change big time for the worse, so no thank you. <laughs> yeah. And Daniel purposed in his heart. He said, I'm not going down this path. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's so simple. We see this in the book of Daniel. We see the same pattern many times throughout the Word of God. Right. We see the same pattern in the world throughout humanity. Come on. Because it works. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And if Satan can get us to change our looks and get us to conform to this world just to meet the standards of this world and in order to be accepted by this world, then we've completely missed the mark. Amen. Amen. Completely missed it. That's right. Amen. You see people coming to church and you, you have to do certain things in order to get them to stay. I know preachers right now, when, when the minister walks in the back of the church, they go down to the members and say, do this and this and this and this. We want to make a good impression. Oh. Well, yes, obviously we want to make a good impression, but the power of God is more important than impression. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, I mean, yeah, we, we should be friendly and kind and loving and, and inviting and, and but make sure we're not compromising in order to do such a thing. Amen. Amen. If they want to leave, they'll leave. If they want to stay, they'll stay. Let God do it. Let's just stick with the book. Let's just stay where God wants us to stay. And serve Him as best we can and let Him deal with the rest of it. Amen. 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 Let's say it's easy as that, but it's not. But, but you know, sounds good. And it works. <laughs> we got to work on it. Amen. But He did all of these things for one other thing. He wanted to change Daniel's love. We keep talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Manker, Daniel. We got these other guys here too that was named. Yeah. They wanted to change their love. Yeah, sure. They wanted to change their name. Yeah. They wanted to change everything about them. Satan knows if he can get our heart. You say, I'll never give Satan my heart. Well, I played the right mind. I'm going to say, Satan, I want you to have my heart. But he knows if he can get your heart on that car. He's yeah. got you right where he wants. Yeah. Yeah. He knows if he gets you to such a point, change your location and your literature and the way you talk to the people you hang around, the people that we associate with, and he begins to get our heart desiring the things of this world. He's got it. Yeah. That's right. Amen. He don't care where my heart is, Brother Robert, as long as it's not on God. Amen. Amen. That's right. It don't matter. He says, I don't care what you serve, who you find, as long as it's not God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
We say, I'm not going to give Satan my heart. Well, we'll give it to a lot of other things, and that's exactly what we did if it's not God's. That's right. Amen. Amen. If God does not have our heart, if He does not have our life, if we cannot look to God and say, God, You are my very life, You are my very being, Your will is my will, if we can't look at Him and say, the devil's got a trap where he wants us. Amen. 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 He's not going to jump out of the closet and say, I want you to follow me. Oh. He's not, the devil's not going to jump out of the closet and say, I want you to serve me and I want you to teach for me and I want you to do this for me. No, he's going to come out and say, I want to change your location a little bit. We've got to move some things around. Because uh, I know you're too smart to fall for it. So I've got to fix how you think. Oh, right. I've got to fix how you look. Amen. I've got to work on your language a little bit. You say, you say, well, I don't say bad things. That's maybe true. Say, you may, you may be one that talks about God a lot. Say, you might just want to put a stop to that. Yeah. Yeah. You might not turn, might, well, it's golf. He wouldn't care to turn into a cousin sailor. But, but you know, it's, it's not one extreme or the other. Right. What do we talk about? Yeah. When we're with everybody else. What do we think about when we're in church listening to the preaching of the Word of God and, and music is going on? Well, we, we know where our heart is, but, but, but we, well, what do you think about it? There you go. Amen. Yeah. What excites you when you're in the house of God or outside of the house of God? What is it that truly excites you the most? Uh, that will let us know where our heart is. Amen. Yeah. You see, Satan be pulling away at that little by little. Yeah, Amen. And before we know it, not careful, we'll be partaking of the king's meat. That's right. And we'll be sitting at the king's table. Yes, sir. And we'll be speaking a total different language. Yeah. And we'll be reading from a total other book. Yeah. And we'll be standing behind a podium in front of a crowd we've never seen before, teaching something that we never dreamed we would be teaching. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We'll be teaching our kids things that we never dreamed we'd be teaching. That's right. We'll be teaching our grandkids things, and they'll hear things come out of our mouth and see things out of our life that we never dreamed. Why? We changed this up a little bit. He moved to point A to point B. Got me out of the Word of God. Started putting things in my life that shouldn't be there. Started getting me to accept things that I thought not accept. And the next thing you know, you're done. Yeah. He succeeded. Yes. That's my message tonight. Right. That was good. You know what else to say? That's that was good, brother. We got to watch out for it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I've heard me say it many times the devil can't take anything you have. But he has to talk you out of it. If you're saved, you just can't come and say, I want that back. We have it. But he'll put people in your life that you look up to, like he already said, to lead you astray. People that you long to be like. My little boy. I'm an outdoorsman. Robert came up to the house the other day and helped us cut some trees. I sat down in the middle of the driveway, sharpening my chainsaw. And Malachi's got a little old saw about that long, plastic, mash it up, and it burr. But after Robert's long gone, Malachi's sitting up on the porch with that little old saw. I mean, he even turns the file like he's supposed to turn it. Pulls it. Because Robert taught him. You see, he's looking up to you. But the devil will always put somebody in Bobby's life that ain't quite just right. But you look up to him. You see, in the Bible, whenever you had leprosy, it affected every aspect of your life. First of all, it was just a little spot. Then it would get in your clothes. Then it would get in your home. And then before long, you would just be isolated all by yourself. See, just little by little, I look at the zeal 
these young converts love Jesus, the devil does not like that at all. But see, he, you see, he knows where you come from. He's got somebody just so patiently waiting to a low point of discouragement to step in and say, why don't you just do this for a while? You reckon the man in the tombs was sitting up there cutting himself, got that way overnight? No. Little by little. But thanks be unto God for the man who stepped off the ship. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're here tonight, boy, so good preaching, so good preaching. The devil's so smart. While we all stand to our feet tonight, you may be here tonight. We need to be careful. I believe it'd be good for everybody that's able to come to the altar. Hey, these people I look up to, there's also people look up to me. Somebody thinks more of you than to do anybody else. Be careful how you lead. Be sure they see you speaking the right language. I have to teach my boy all the time not to say certain words that some of y'all say. Because I don't want him talking like that. By words. Because it's so close to the wrong thing. Amen. It's just a byproduct of sin. Yeah, amen, preacher. Because That's it's right. so close to saying the wrong thing. And when you slip up, it won't be that bad because it's so close to what you always say. Be yeah. careful that we don't have foolish jesting. Make sure that our words are pure words. Make sure the words we choose to say are the right words. You're here tonight and say, Lord, help me to be pure. Help me to be pure. I want to stay on that rock and I want my feet solid on the rock. Help us as we all come to pray tonight.